garganta que ansia morrar Que temo ahogar Te amo So my name is Ivan Argote, I'm an artist, I'm from Colombia, I was born and raised in Colombia and then I moved to Paris where I did most of my like professional life, I've uh, been there 13 years, now I'm 35 years old. Um, I work uh, mainly in film and sculpture, sometimes in outdoors sculptures, uh, some projects I've done for the public space in, in Europe or in Africa or South America or here in the US. Uh, this installation is called A Point of View. It's part of Desert X, which is a biennial that are related to the landscape or related to like some ecological issues. That's the, that's the point of this, of, of this installation precisely. Uh, that like suggesting you to take a look at the landscape, to have like an observation. At the same time, on these steps, you're gonna see these kind of poems, small poems or questions that um, are um, related to the situation with the lake that is shrinking, uh, the, the ecological situation around this area that is kind of problematic. The uh, first time I visited the Coachella Valley was a year ago, already with the idea to make something. At the, at the time I didn't know what to do, so it was just exploring this area that I wanted to make uh, these stairs. At the beginning it was just a big gigantic one, but it was kind of complicated to build and also for security reasons it was kind of impossible to make. My intention is to create um, a space, a place where you can go visit and engage yourself with the landscape. For me, it's more like a philosophical tool. Like uh, I think myself as a researcher, and like I propose like these kind of philosophical experiences based on research. Sometimes are based on like interaction with landscape. It's not as something like I used to express myself or like how I feel. Or it's more like a, a tool that I use to ask questions about like why the city is like that, why we behave like this with others, why we let this kind of ecological things happen. I want them some to look at like, you know, away, like to the landscape, and I want some others to look at ourselves. So I like this idea of you kind of have this perspective that you're looking at this kind of landscape mountains or the lake, and then there's some others are looking at the center of, so you can kind of have an interaction also with people that are in other, platform. The installation is called a point of view but there is five different points of view so it's an idea of like change perspectives and then I like it some that look at ourselves in a way. It's been like a year of doing plans, uh, doing like changing locations, changing orientation and then I got to do the architectural plans because I like to do these kind of things. So I, I made the drawings then you exchange with the contractors and then this like uh, you have like a feedback so you change the number of steps and then we decided to start building, so we started building like a month ago. Yeah, no, it's hard, it's hard. It's been a very tough week and then we all took, like, we're alone today. So it's, it's like we have like three, four tons of concrete to, to carry, so it's not a happy thing. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, thank you guys. What drew me to the desert, first of all, was some friends inviting me out here from Los Angeles. And when I arrived to the desert, I felt like this place was waiting for me all along. It was like, welcome Jessica, let's get to work. <laughs> like it was always in my cards that I would end up here. It was my fate, it was my destiny. Um, it had a strong magnetism. It, hit at a lot of spiritual places in me that I didn't even know existed. And it was 
overwhelming with this, its strength and beauty and I knew I needed to stay here and create and um, my my search was over. I didn't need to leave. I love California and this was a perfect spot to, to um, exist and do what I need to do. I'm preparing for a big show. It's pretty simple. Um, I just uh, make sure I'm exercising a lot, um, eating my vegetables and getting plenty of sleep. <laughs> Also rehearsing my music, of course, um, and I might do a couple little secretive uh, rituals that I can't reveal to you or I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Coming back to the desert always replenishes my energy after performing. Um, this place is a great place to rejuvenate yourself and your cells and breathe that fresh desert air. Also my, my two white kitty cats help me. I talk to them quite a bit. <laughs> my costumes, as far as evolving as I've grown as a musician, I don't know if they've evolved necessarily. I feel like I've always had a strong sense of style since I was a child. I always knew what I liked. I loved looking through fashion magazines with my mom and I still like the same things. Um, I think I have like a classic Jessica look that I maybe tweak throughout the years depending on what may be trendy. Not that I like to follow trends, but I think maybe we all do subconsciously a little bit. So um, I always have kind of my go-to pieces that are just classic and yeah, I might have pink hair for a second or different sort of prints, but um, yeah, I feel like I, I really know what looks good on me and what I like and um, hopefully it won't get boring to people but I yeah I you know I, I like to dress loud <laughs> um, but I do know what, what um, compliments me and I'll probably always be working within that perimeter. I think you just need to follow what you believe in and stick to your guns and do it because it makes you happy. Um, don't really expect anything to come of your musical career, no matter how talented you are. It's hard work and sometimes it's just luck and you have to be doing it because you love it and kind of put your expectations at the door when you walk into this industry because it's um, it involves some very high highs and some very low lows and hopefully you can fall somewhere in between and not go crazy doing it. Um, as far as a female, I guess, I don't really think about it that much. Um, I just kind of think of myself as a human making music. Just, I guess I'm just kind of stirring the pot right now on myself and figuring out what kind of recipe is going to, um, to come out of me next. Heat waves. They affect every species of plants differently, depending on the origin of it. Hearing this, it sounds like the same can be done to us. But we're not plants. Well, it is summertime, and you're going to hear the words heat waves. Severe heat wave conditions are continuing today. There are excessive heat warnings. It's dry, and it's sunny and there's lots more of this kind of weather to come. In recent years, excessive heat has caused more deaths than all other weather events. Things like drinking your water and protecting your skin when outside in heat are crucial things to remember, especially when living in the desert. We all need to stay aware and stay safe when going or doing anything out in the heat. Always make sure to protect yourself.
Stephanie Bruce, and I'm the Director of Nutrition Services for Palm Springs Unified School District. Uh, what are your responsibilities specifically at the office? Uh, my responsibility is to oversee the entire school meal program that we run for the district. Um, I manage 175 employees. I oversee um, a breakfast program, lunch program, supper program, summer program, um, early childhood meal program, and um, monitor the nutritional analysis menus, procurement, and logistics that go along with that. My name is Gabino Serrano. I'm a 10th grader. Do you eat school lunch? Yeah, I eat school lunch every once in a while, you know, just when I'm hungry. Are you aware of what's in school lunch? I do not know what's in school lunch. Usually the only days I eat are Tuesdays because it's Domino's. Did you know that the salad is homemade? I did not know the salad was homemade. And that's where we fail at marketing and letting the students really know where the food comes from. And you know, we, we get fresh fruit uh, twice a week, so and it comes right from local um, farmers and farmers up in Central California. What's your favorite part about working in the nutritional service? Oh, the people and the kids. It's, it's fun. It's always changing. Um, no day is like any other day. Um, it's challenging to try and serve 22,000 meals a day. Um, and that's, that's what I like about it. The people who work here love what they do, and that makes me love my job. My um, name is Randy Avina. I'm a senior. Do you eat school lunch? I do. Every day. Do you like school lunch? Yeah, I do. It's nutrients. It feeds me. So why do you think a lot of kids dislike the school lunch? I think they dislike the school lunch because they have a bad experience with it at one point and they just stop. Or they got too used to regular food. Okay, do you, are you like aware of the nutrients that go into like making the school lunch? I can see it when there's like hundreds of kids, there's only like four lunch ladies, lunch males, I don't know. Uh, and then there's like so much food to choose from. Yeah. My name's Jennifer Maddox, I'm the Marketing and Wellness Coordinator for Nutrition Services. How do you feel about students not eating cafeteria food? Well, one of my goals is to encourage students to consume food at um, the cafeteria. That's one of my objectives. And so I'm often finding different ways to go about that by promoting um, how nutritious our foods are. There's a stigmatism that, um, that school lunch isn't very good and it's not very fresh and it's not healthy, but it really is. So that's part of my job is to figure out ways um, to promote lunch and to encourage students to try our foods. So we celebrate California Thursdays where I'm promoting with maybe posters or media. What? What's, What's wrong? wrong? I don't know. I just feel like he's not paying any attention to me anymore. She's been so clean lately. It's getting so annoying. Yeah. Like he's not even answering my text messages. The other day at practice, she blew up my phone. Wow. Sucks, I guess. And oh my god, the other day, guys, I found a hair on his sweater. A hair. The other day, she found my hair on my sweater and accused me of cheating. A hair? Yes. On his sweater? Yes. The other day. By the way, I'm sorry. She found your very own hair, your long hair, might I add, on your sweater. Yeah. And she made the assumption of cheating. He's cheating. O only possible explanation. Where is he right now? There's not. He's at practice. Are you sure? Yeah. You're positive. Blocker. Nah, it's been too much lately. Like, I'm gonna just break up with it. 
What if he's not at practice? That's just a sign. A sign for what? For him cheating.
Yes, please. Yep. I mean, not right now. I'll make sure. I've always been a very happy person. Nothing really bad has happened to me. That is a lie. This is my life. In fourth grade, I was diagnosed with an acid reflux disease and was out of school for about a month and continues to be a struggle now. In fifth grade, I was bullied because of a rumor that was started by someone who I thought was my friend, <sighs> which then turned into cyberbullying, which is how I developed my anxiety. Whenever I see that person on social media, I try to move on from what happened, but it still gives me anxiety until this day. The summer going into high school, I got depressed, for reasons unknown. My best friend, Beatrice, and her brother, Jose, helped me through it. For a while, I felt great. During that time period, I gained a lot of confidence and energy, but then sophomore year came around, and I was doing fine at first. I even went to youth group, and it made me feel closer to God. But one day, I began feeling sick. I would have nausea, headaches, and a lot of stomach aches. I went to the doctors and got some not-so-good news. Closing the end of sophomore year, I met someone. Was it a mistake? I don't believe it was, because I believe things happen for a reason. I felt genuinely happy. They say that the person you love the most can also hurt you the most. Well, they were right. I met a mentor who helped me through a lot. I became a better person because of them, and I have my priorities straight now. My grades were going up, and I was okay. Until I found out that one of my friends tried to commit suicide. I felt like I cared about a lot of people, but they didn't always care about me. I eventually pushed everyone away because I was so used to people not noticing me. I took a break from social media over the summer, and it helped a lot. I got my mindset in order, and I even joined Color Guard, which seemed to help. It distracted me from what I was feeling. It pulled me out of the water when I felt like I was drowning. Guard gave me such an escape to help me focus on one thing. It taught me dedication and positivity. It was the most fun I had ever had. Because of the whole marching band experience, I feel so much better about myself, and I feel like I'm going to be okay. My name is Jennifer Duran, and I have depression and anxiety, but I'm ready for whatever the world wants to bring me. Lemon of pink, <clears throat> blowing a velvet. <laughs> I realize I'm never the same person I was yesterday. But, of course, my busy schedule always happens to make me forget about that. Hmm. You know, it's like that feeling when you're doing something at one moment and then 
all of a sudden you're not there, but you are, and it's like you were never gone. When I was younger, going to the park put the biggest smile on my face, but, you know, things change. I got older, I grew, got hungrier, and I tried spending time with my family because God knows I never had the time anymore. Dance was probably the one thing that took up all my time, but I loved it. The people were great, I could be myself, you no know, pretending I'm this and that, trying to fit in and shit. I don't know. There was just never a day I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin. Art is everything to me because I'm free to express myself, but then came the time where I didn't even want to be myself. I don't know, things changed, and they changed fast, faster than I wanted them to. I got lonelier, too busy to think about anything else but school and extracurriculars, and I fell into a deep hole, an abyss. Who knows if I'll ever get out again, but I'm trying. Anything that could go wrong is going wrong. You were swirling down in a spiral of hate, anger, and confusion, all while being enveloped by fear. Your breath gets heavier and heavier until you can no longer control your emotions. Your muscles could strain to your body and you're being manipulated by this terrible feeling. You are so scared and you feel like you are being backed into a corner that you can't escape. Everything is going wrong. Everything is going so, so wrong. about anything. I feel terrible and I just don't know what to do. It's all gonna be okay. I, I promise you. Just breathe. <sighs> they say that everything is gonna be okay. And sometimes that's really hard to believe. But the thing is that it's true. And yes, there's gonna be a lot of change. And it's all gonna be really scary. But to the Sedona who doesn't know anything about the world yet and has no idea how easy and hard life can be sometimes, don't ever forget that everything's gonna be okay.